What's up everyone? 5280 Reefer back at you again with a new episode. So for today's episode, I got a little bit of an idea from a comment from the last video. So it's pretty much going to be going over um, what I do to maintain this tank and uh, the razor's edge that I walk. Alright, so a little breakdown on the tank overall. It's a 225 gallon tank, Planet Aquarium with a Tideline 48 sump um, in total water volume minus the rock, the sand, the chambers and all that stuff in, this, uh, in the sump I am looking at about 215 gallons of actual water volume uh, in the sump I have filter socks and then I have a Reef Octo Elite 200 INT skimmer um, Refugium chamber. I used to run a refugium, have a refugium light and stuff, but uh, no longer run the refugium because it was just draining all of my um, micro elements out of the tank. And I want to be dosing those for the corals, not so much for um, macroalgae. So here in this picture, you can see that. Um, you can also see that I have a little BRS uh, reactor. That's where I run some carbon and GFO for the phosphates. And then in the refugium section, I also have some live rock. And then I have three or four liters of the Seachem matrix. So just extra surface area. I had that in there originally because I was running this, this tank with no sand bed in the beginning. So that was supposed to be all the extra surface area I needed but didn't quite work out like that uh, this is also a picture or a little video of my reactor my calcium reactor that I never use and a DJI power strip that I use for like mp40s and odd ends that I don't really need the apex for um, so here in this next clip, I will show you guys my um, cabinet where I have all my electronics for my Apex. So the Apex is in here, uh, my skimmer controller is in here, uh, my uh, Inkbird, and then the two EB832s. Uh, that way it kind of keeps all the water away from all the electronics. I also have my Apex dose in here. And also use the cabinet for storage and stuff like that for my tests and calc washer, some foods, just odd ends. Now that little tank you see to the left right there, um, that is my calc washer reservoir. It is a 16 gallon roto mold tank. I drilled a tiny little hole on top uh, to let air in. So as it pulls the calc washer water, into the tank it doesn't cause it it doesn't cause negative pressure and doesn't implode or anything like that or cause uh, air bubbles to go back up the the air line or the dosing line so yeah basically this tank um, I do a 12% water change every week it's either on Sundays or Mondays I use the Red Sea blue bucket salt um, RODI water, of course. Um, for dosing, I am doing carbon dosing every night. It's my own DIY solution. It's pretty much just alcohol and sugar. Um, I dose three mils every night. I do still have nitrate issues of my nitrates getting close to bottoming out. Um, so I do dose nitrates. Um, and then my phosphates tend to be on the higher side because I do feed a lot of pellets um, on top of all the food I feed. Um, so I run GFO for that, which I change out every two weeks. <clears throat> so that's kind of the filtration side of things. Uh, my filter socks, I change out once a week. They usually get pretty clogged up by the end of the week. Uh, I definitely have to change it. So for trace elements, I do dose uh, trace elements. I use the Fauna Marin uh, Multi Elements A and B. Um, stuff is great. Um, it's pretty cheap. I think it's like 40 bucks for each bottle for a liter of it. 
and with a 215 gallon total water volume of my tank, I only dose a capful that it comes with the bottle once a week. I do my, all my dosing for that stuff on Saturdays. On top of dosing that, I do like to dose amino acids. And the amino acid that I use right now is the Polyp Lab amino acids. I was using the Acro Power, but I, I ended up buying a big bottle of the Acro Power and it ended up congealing on me and it looked like there was a layer of cheese curds on top of it. And on the bottom was clear liquid, so I thought that was kind of weird. And I'm definitely not getting acro power anymore. Um, on top of that, I do dose iodine. Um, on my last ICP test, it was right in between the yellow and the green, meaning that was a like almost leaning towards low. I used to dose one drop a day of the Lugol solution from Brightwells but now I'm doing two drops a day um, and I'm going to be doing an ICP test probably here in the next month and a half or so. I, I try to do it now every three months since the tank is kind of on autopilot and uh, if I ever see issues I'll do emergency tests. But in any case, so I also on top of that I dose iron um, I made a DIY version of iron uh, that Randy Holmes Farley uses. It's basically the Farragon pills that we would use as an iron supplement. And um, I made a concentration with that with some RODI water. And it works wonders. I dose that twice a week. Um, I dose very little of it. And it keeps all the algae happy, which keeps the dinoflagellates away. At least in my case, that's that's what it's been doing. It's been really helping me combat the dinoflagellates. Um, for alkalinity and calcium dosing, I am using super saturated Kalkwasser in that 16 gallon vat that I showed you guys. Um, I do the six grams per gallon of Kalkwasser and I just keep that thing stocked up. I just keep topping it up, uh, throw in uh, I think it's like three teaspoon little thingy, um, so like a quarter cup or something like that of Kalkwasser in there every once in a while. Uh, mix it up and let it do its thing. Um, my total evaporation is more than what I'm actually dosing to the tank with Kalkwasser overnight. My total evaporation is about 7,200 milliliters. Um, but I dose 5200 so my ATO does still go off here and there um, It's a 15 gallon reservoir. It usually lasts me about two or three weeks before I have to top it up um, Yeah, so that's how I maintain my alkalinity my alkalinity stays between 9 and 10 um, Yes, that's a little bit on the higher side, but I'm sure as time goes on it may potentially drop, maybe it won't. Uh, the house I'm living in is newer, so it does trap a lot of CO2 in the house. Because um, without the Kalkwasser, uh, my pH was between like 7.6 and 7.8 during the day. It was, it was bad. Uh, but with the Kalkwasser, my pH at the lowest will be 7.9 and at the highest will be about 8.2, 8.3. And then for calcium, uh, the Kalkwasser for the most part does take care of that, but I've noticed that over time my calcium does slowly go down. So I do dose some regular two-part calcium once in a blue moon just to get it to where I like, which is around 430 to 450. Uh, and then magnesium, um, I dose it as need be. I test for magnesium once a month. If I start noticing I'm creeping below 1300, I'll start dosing it. Um, and again, just cheap little two-part or three-part magnesium. And that's about it for dosing. And for everything else, I just have a whole heck of a lot of flow in the tank. I have two MP60s at 90% reef, uh, reef crest mode. And then I have two MP40s at 90% reef crest mode. Um, I have one of the MP60s as the main driver 
and then one of the MP40s on the opposite side is a slave, and then the other MP60 on the other uh, side is the main, and the other MP40 is a slave. So it, 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 there's a lot of chaotic flow in the tank. And for the lighting, I have three Radeon XR30 G5 Blues uh, that are running 75%. All the channels but the red and green are at 100%. And then for the T5s, I have two Blue Plus and two True Atinics that turn on for about two to three hours a day. Um, and my overall light schedule is about 12 hours. Turns on at 10 in the morning, turns off 10 at night. And yeah, that's pretty much the formula of this tank. Um, I do feed the tank um, a lot of mysis. As I said, twice a day, I get those big old sheets of the Hikari uh, spirulina mysis and that usually lasts me about two weeks and then on top of that I add a lot of seaweed extreme pellets that are fed through my AFS twice a day to keep the tangs and all the herbivores happy um, other than that nothing crazy you know just sticking to the water changes uh, sticking to the dosing of the trace elements um, this tank is a little weird, you know, uh, I have coralline growing in patches on the rocks, but it won't grow anymore because of my uh, Koi's parrot wrasse or parrot fish. Uh, he really, really cleans the rocks all the time. The only place it really grows is on my overflow, like in the weir, in the baffles. Um, and that's about it. But other than that, the corals have been doing really, really well. They grow really quickly. Uh, I've been fragging continuously on the stuff that needs fragging. Obviously, something small like this coral here, I won't be fragging anytime soon. But if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. I would love to make any other videos that you guys request, if it's information or whatever it be. As always, guys, thanks for watching. You guys have a wonderful day, and keep on reefing.